Some men have said that it takes a generation of peace to restore the vagrants of war to their homes or give them a chance to find new homes. This is the story of a man who tried to forget the past and to start a new life. He did everything he thought was necessary, but he forgot one detail. Are you sir? Are you Paul Bundy? Yes, I am Paul Bundy. Mr. Bundy, would you mind telling me where you were born? No, not at all. I was born in the city of Brunsfield. What year? 1908. In April 22nd, 1908. And uh, how long have you lived here in Bristol? Ever since the end of the war. Why all these questions? May I see your papers? Mr. Bundy, I have some good news for you. Very good news indeed. A relative of yours in America has died and left you an inheritance of $117,000. I represent the American executor of the state. Congratulations, Mr. Bundy. <laughs> Congratulations, Paul. Congratulations. <laughs> The New York office was clamoring for the story of what a $117,000 inheritance does to an obscure European shoe clerk. So I went to the pleasant town of Fister to talk to Paul Bundy and to some of his friends. And so, in the name of our town, I want to thank Paul Bundy for his generous contribution to our office. <laughs> and to express our hope that Paul will, like a good citizen of our town, marry one of our young fair daughters and settle down among us for good. I have a cup of coffee. Town's certainly happy about Mr. Bundy's good luck, aren't they? It's not every day that a man inherits such a fortune. What would you do if you inherited $117,000? Oh. Okay. I don't know. So many things I wouldn't know where to start. Uh, you're American, aren't you? Yes, I'm a newspaper woman. My name's Helen Davis. Branderson is my name. Would you mind answering my question? Well, it's quite an interesting one. I suppose the first thing I would do would be to, to quit my job. Quit your job? What is your job? Well, I'm a, I'm a commercial traveler. What you Americans call a, a traveling salesman in town on some business. I'm staying right here at the inn. Yes, Miss Davis. Some people are, are really born under a lucky star. Give it to Mr. Bounty. But you should tell me what you would do if, if you inherited such an amount of money. No, that's not fair. I'm the one that's supposed to ask the question. <laughs> or you'll be spoiling everything. What do you want me to do in the meantime? I am in room 19. Come there in about 15 minutes. It's best that no one sees us together.
Mary Cowan, Miss Davis. Oh, this key's stuck again. Oh, so, may, may, may I help you? Well, I think it doesn't work. Oh, Maid, uh, could you use your pass key? Oh, is it that key again? Yes, the door is stuck. I'll have to go through room 19 on the balcony. Just a minute. All right. Well, right, here you are. Thanks for trying, anyhow. All right. I'm sorry it didn't work. that you are a journalist, Miss Davis. Yes, I came here to do a story on Mr. Paul Bundy. Oh, I see. Have you ever met the murdered man? No, I never have. And your room adjoins this one? Yes, that's right. Are you positive that you saw this man come out of room 19? Yes, I'm positive. I had little trouble with my key. I told you, I had nothing to do with this. You admit he coming out of the room. It wasn't the wrong room. I made a mistake. Are you ready to hear it in? No, he is not. Hmm. You are a stranger in our town, and so was the murdered man. Why did you come here? What brought you here? Come with us. get a wrong impression of our child. Perhaps Miss Davis would like to change her room. Oh, no, 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 certainly well, not. Well, you must come and visit us very soon when there is less excitement. Sit at home, Miss Davis. Oh, thank you. Excuse me, it must be my office. Hello. Miss Davis. Yes? I must see you right away, Miss Davis. Who is this? It's about the murder. Well, why do you come to me? You are a journalist. You're interested in the truth. Yes, of course I'm interested in the truth. Why don't you go to the police? I can't. You must believe me. All right, I'll wait for you here at the inn. That's impossible. I swear to you that you can trust me. I will be at the square next to the church. How will I know you? I will recognize you. Please hurry.
Else? I'm absolutely innocent, Miss Davis. I didn't kill Max. He was my friend. You told the police you didn't even know him. I couldn't tell them that I knew him. What do you want me to do? I'm wounded. In case something happens to me, I want you to know why Max was murdered. Did you tell anybody? No. How do I know it wasn't that gun that killed Max? This gun was meant for another purpose. Oh. Eight years ago, in a camp for war prisoners, there were nine of us plotting to escape. It was in 1944. One man gave our plans away. He informed on us to gain his own freedom. We swore that the first one to find him would kill him like a mad dog. Tonight, I came to fulfill the pledge. Max also came, for the same reason. Both of us were... You need a doctor. No, that will spoil everything. My arm is bleeding. I'll... I'll get you some bandages. Wait here. about you, Miss Davis. What are you doing in my room? Waiting for you, naturally. If you don't leave at once, I'll call the manager. That would only cause unnecessary complications. Can you please leave? Where were you, Miss Davis? I don't think I have to tell you that. In my country, shielding a fugitive from the police is a very serious offense. For a salesman, you show an unusual interest in criminal affairs. I'm no salesman. I'm a government agent. And now I know you will be more cooperative, Miss Davis. That depends. Where is Dolan? I don't know. But you saw him? Yes, I saw him. He's wounded, but he disappeared. He says he's innocent. Strangely enough, I believe he's telling the truth. That's true. He is innocent. But if you knew that, why did you stand by when they arrested him? I have my own reasons for my actions, Miss Davis. Do you know who the murderer is? Yes. Well, don't you think you ought to arrest him before he gets away? He might try. In fact, he has a very fast car. But you won't have a chance. Is 
this what you are looking at? Dorland. Yes, Dorland. Number eight four three two seven eight. Here, see it. And you, what's your name? Who are you? Paul Bundy? No, you are not Paul Bundy. Paul Bundy died. You're an imposter. Your real name is Sanders. Sanders, the pig we used to call you. What do you want? You betrayed Paul Bundy. You had him killed. Then you took his identity. You traded Paul's life for your freedom. You thought you made a good bargain, didn't you? What do you want? It's not what I alone want. It's what the dead ones want. The ones you betrayed. The ones whose lives you sold. Shall we ask them too? I was forced to do it. And who forced you to kill Max? You thought you could get away with that too, didn't you? Listen to me. I'm rich now. You can have my money. All of it. Your money. Your money. You took Paul's life, then his name, and now his money. It would have been Paul's inheritance if you hadn't turned him over to the firing squad. I emptied it first, Sanders. This time, I am dealing the cards. That's better. I too will sit down. I'm a little tired. I'm waiting for you. Now, Sanders, pick up that phone. I want you to call Miss Davis at the inn. Tell her to come here and don't mention my name. I want her to get the real story of your life. I want her to know and to be a witness. An execution should have a witness. Hello. Uh, Miss Davis? Yes, this is Miss Davis speaking. Paul Bundy speaking. I have a friend of yours here in my apartment who would like to see you. Oh, who is it? He asked me not to mention his name. Is it Dorlan? Please, Miss Davis. Please come. And hurry. I'll take a taxi right away. Well? She's coming. Sit down, Sanders. This is going to be the longest wait of your life, Sanders. Sit down. You must get used to waiting. It will be a long wait from now on until eternity. wait any longer. Don't kill me. She's coming. She, she, she told me she was. Don't kill me. There. I hear a car. Come in. You came just in time, Miss Davis. I'm glad. I knew you would want to know the truth. This is the murderer of Max. My poor friend Max. I want you to come because I'm going to avenge Max and all the others. You have no right to take the law into your own hands. You're feverish. You don't know what you're doing. I, I, I can't wait. Miss Davis. Davis. You're coming with me? 
We can't leave him alone. Why, he's lost a lot of blood. It's a jungle world, Miss Davis. You go first, in front of me. not dying. Not yet. Are you sure he can't get away? There is only one road leading out the farm, north and south. And you have to put up road locks at both ends. Good. Yes, I'm all right. What about our land? Oh, he'll be all right, too. They'll take him to the hospital. It's all such a waste. I know, Miss Davis. These are the last echoes of war. The ruins of blasted cities have been cleared. New towns, villages, and factories have been built. But it is uh, the human wounds which take a long time to heal. 